Colors in CSS are pretty straightforward for the most part, but there's a few fun tricks and little things you might not know about them. Hello my front end friends and thank you so much for coming to join me for yet another video. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel I help you fall madly in love with CSS and one way we can do that is by exploring some of the little things people don't always know about it. And while declaring colors is simple, there's a few little tricks and things that you can do with colors sometimes that make your life a little bit easier. Um, so let's jump in and take a look at some of these things. Now, not the nicest page we're going to be looking at, but it, it's going to be a nice breakdown of some of the stuff we can do with colors. Um, so first up actually is, uh, and we're mostly going to be talking about RGB and HSL, but because we have new color syntaxes coming or color functions coming with uh, things like lab and LCH and other ones that are actually going to improve things, we're going to have bigger color gamuts we can work with, uh, and LCH should actually be easier to work with than HSL and stuff. Uh, but one thing, because those were coming, when the spec got updated and they knew they were adding these, they also updated the syntax for colors. So while we can write a color this way, the way you usually see it, you can do it without any, um, it's like a space separated one instead of having comma separated ones. And it works perfectly fine uh, as you can see right now. So if I change, you know, let's change my hue here to something maybe a little bit nicer. We'll try 200 uh, and update the color. And you can see that it works. And even though there's no commas and I prefer writing it this way because it's a little bit faster. But you might be wondering, what if you want an alpha value? Well, if you are using the space separated syntax to do an alpha, instead of just putting something here, which might even break the whole thing, let's see, it just doesn't seem to, oh, I'm getting an error and it's just not compiling it. Um, so what I actually need to do is put a forward slash and then put the alpha value. And there you can see it's lightened it up. So uh, that's one way we can do it. And you might also be noticing something else is I didn't put RGBA here. I just wrote RGB and I can still put in this alpha value. And that's the same if you are using the comma separated syntax. I can come here and do a 0.25 and it will bring in the alpha even though I didn't write HSLA. So uh, I tend not to do RGBA or HSLA anymore because I don't have to. <laughs> and you can just put it in and remove it as you need to. Um, so that's kind of handy. And same thing with HSL. If you were wondering, you just put the forward slash there and it works. As you can see, I'm, I'm also using that down here for RGB. And so I've started writing my colors this way because I find it easier not to put the A and not to bother with my commas. Now circling back up to RGB, one thing that I find really hard with RGB is to know what color I'm actually going to get, unless it's something like pure red, where I can do like a 255 and then a 00, because the way RGB works is, and let's put this to a 1, I guess, or get rid of it. Um, this is my red value, my green value, my blue value, So, th and the scale is from 0 to 255. 255 is a bit of a hard scale to work on when you're trying to get a color though, right? Uh, Cause you're like, okay, I want like, I want red and some green mixed into there. What's halfway at 255? Well, 250 divided by two is 125. So it's a, like a 127.5, whatever. You know what, or if I want a 25%, it's even harder to get there and whatever it is, you don't actually need to work from zero to 255. You can actually do it from zero to 100. You can say that I want 100% red, 50% green and 0% blue, and it's going to work. Or I guess I should have done a different color. Uh, so we can actually see that it is working. And there we go. We have done 100% red and 50% blue. Or we can just do a 50-50 or whatever you want. Um, so I do find HSL is still a lot easier to work with than RGB, because here I just set my hue, then it's my lightness, then it's my saturation, or no, sorry, satur HS saturation, then lightness. Uh, so it's just easier to work with than like how are colors mixing together to give me a final result. But this does make life a little bit easier by being able to just use percentages rather than that 255 scale, at least in my own opinion. Now, one interesting thing here is it actually lets you mix and match, even though when I was reading the spec, it said you can't. So if I do a 127, it, it's going to be the same thing. But let's just come in here and say I do a 255. Um, because there's no percentage on there, it's actually working. So this would be the same as this being, uh, or actually just to show you that it's the same, we'll do these two and this one, but we'll switch this one over to 100%. Um, and it, it's also working. So you could mix and match, even though you're not supposed to. So that might not be perfect. This is in Chrome right now. Other browsers might not uh, like you mixing and matching like that. Uh, and it's just awkward as well. So I wouldn't suggest it. And speaking of percentages and, and other units that you can use, when you're doing um, your HSLs, 
the 200 here, there's a few interesting things with it. So it's a scale of 200 or zero to 360 in this case, because we can go 360 would be red and zero would be red because you're following the color wheel. You're just going all the way around the color wheel and then we'll put it at 100% uh, saturation and 50% lightness, which should give us a pure red. And that's why I like HSL, because I can just go, you know, 250 and see what the color is. And then I, you know, I got my blue. And then anyway, you start learning what these values are and you can sort of get to where you want. And I know that's blue. I know red is all the way over at 360 or zero because it circles around. Uh, so that means if I go like, oh, I want this to be a bit more like purpley, which is blue and red together. Well, let's try like a 290 and then it should become more purpley. Uh, and then I go, ah, it's good, but it's too light. So I just come here and I can darken it down a little bit or whatever. I like HSL a lot more than RGB. But what's interesting is with this, you don't just have to deal with this, which is actually in degrees, um, but it's nice because you don't have to include that degree. It's going to work without it. And just if it's unitless, it assumes you're using degrees. Um, but you are supposed to be able to use the turn unit here as well, uh, but it doesn't actually work. Like if I do a 0.25 turn, it's not going to work. It just sort of ignores it and makes it zero. And you're also supposed to be able to use rad. Um, but it's also not supported yet. It, I guess it might depend on the browser and where support is for all of these right now. Um, so let's go back to my 250 or whatever we had. But one thing that is interesting with this, as I said, we're sort of going around, right? We're going from zero, we're turning, and then we're going back around and back around. But you don't actually have to go back around. It's not a scale of zero to 360. It's just, it's turning. So it's gonna go wherever you want. So you can see here, I've made this little slider that lets me go through and we're getting up there and you can see when I get to 360, we're gonna be circling back over to red, but then we can actually go past 360 and just keep on going. And it's just gonna keep looping around and every time it like adds back up to 360, it's like having done a loop that way. And that also means you can go into the negatives as well and loop that way too. And you might be going, well, Kevin, why would I wanna do this? But if you're using JavaScript to maybe set a color or you know do something with your colors, this could be a lot easier than like, okay, once you get to 360, reset back to zero. You can just keep on adding or subtracting from a number and the colors is gonna keep updating and keep on working if you're using HSL, which is really, really cool and can be handy in the right situation. And another one that I wanna look at before we go, um, which is gonna deal with uh, these guys over here where I have some opacities set up. And so let's go and take a look here where the reason these are getting darker is because um, we have these examples where I'm just doing like a, a background color. So I have these like overlapping things with so the 0.2 opacity. So if I put this to a one opacity, obviously they just come fully there. I can do a 0.5. Um, and not that it changes too much in your life, but if you wanted to, instead of playing with like the zero to one scale, this can also be a percentage. So I can do uh, 0.5 or I can write 50% and have the same thing. So let's change this to like 25%. Uh, and it will get lighter or 15%. So not a big difference. You, you know, one has a percent sign at the end, the other one has a dot before it. Uh, the one thing I would say is whichever one you're choosing, be consistent with it. You wouldn't want to use percent in one place and the point somewhere else. I tend to still use the point or dot or whatever this one, uh, just because I'm used to it. So that's what I use. Uh, but if you like the idea of using percentages here instead, you can definitely use percentages. The one thing you can't do is put like a really big number. It's just going to assume that you wanted a one. So if you do want to use a different scale, you do need the unit that is going to be on there. And while we've been in CodePen for this entire thing, I am going to open up VS Code. And I've mentioned this one before, but it's for me the greatest thing ever, because as I mentioned, I prefer work working in HSL. But a lot of the time when you're copying and pasting values from the web or from a design system or something like that, you're usually getting them or like color pickers, whatever it is, you're usually getting them as a hex code. And I know some people can read hex and know what the color is or adjust it easily, I can't. Uh, so in VS Code, you should get these little color boxes that show up, which can also let you change the color. But when you hover over the color, you can also come where it says HSL and click on it and it's gonna switch between different color modes. So you get HSL, uh, hue, whiteness, blackness, which so you're playing with the whiteness and blackness. I don't like working with HWB. I find it a little bit awkward, but you can use that. RGB or your hex. So if you paste in a hex, you just have to hover on top of it, click on it once, and then you have an HSL value instead, which I find a little bit easier to work with. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like more CSS tips and tricks and other things, I have a video that I think you'd really enjoy right here. And with that, I wanna say a very big thank you to my enablers of awesome who are Jan, Johnny, Lucas, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, and Tim. 
There's so many of them, I have to read them off a list now. But thank you guys so very much, as well as all my other patrons for your monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.